Hi, everyone. This is Betsy Wurzel, your host of Chatting with Betsy on Passionate World Talk Radio, where our mantra is to educate, enlighten, and entertain. The views of the guests may not represent those of the station or the host. Folks, you're going to want to stay tuned to my guest today. I do have phenomenal guests on my show, and today is no exception. I have with me today Donna Moult who's originally from New Jersey, Jersey girl. Got to help my Jersey girls out. And uh, she now now lives in Hawaii. Donna is amazing. She has a Facebook group called Holistic Health and Nature Therapy. Uh, She has a book, Live and Work Like the Future Matters, which we're going to talk about. She is an echo entrepreneur. She's a speaker. She was a TEDx speaker. She's a health and holistic coach. She is a holistic chef. She is a positivity coach and um, podcast host of uh, a dose of positivity. And if you need a dose of positivity, I highly recommend you listen to Donna's show. Um, Donna also wrote uh, many other books. Um, she has a recipe book. I am going to put the link in the blog so you can read about Donna. And I highly recommend you going on Amazon and going on Donna's website. Donna has been an echo entrepreneur since 1980. And her motto, I love this, why retire when I can inspire. Oh, I love that. And <laughs> I want to welcome Donna Maltz to Chatting with Betsy. Oh, great. Aloha. Thank you for that lovely introduction, Betsy. And I'm so excited to be here with you today and share positivity and love and all good things with your audience. And thank you, everybody who's tuned in to your in for a treat and, uh, Look forward to hearing any comments or hearing from you after the interview if you're inspired. Thank you. And I was also a guest on Donna's show, a Dose of Positivity, back, I think, in August, August yes. or September. Yes. Um, and that's on YouTube. And Donna is also on YouTube, and that will also be uh, in the blog. Donna, I get inspired when I listen to you. And you have wonderful guests on your show. And you are a very busy uh, woman. Oh, plus, do you have, um, you also, do you rent um, housing in Hawaii? Yeah, well, what we do, my husband and I have a beautiful um, vacation rental eco farmstead retreat. And people can come either just come on their own to the vacation rental or they can come and do a, a custom retreat with us here where I counsel people on on health and also on business, on starting uh, businesses that put social and environmental justice at the forefront of their endeavors. So first we work on a a life plan and then we work on a business plan and um, it's just a beautiful place to retreat. And just to backwards there, you guys, if you haven't listened to the interview with Betsy and I, it was one of my favorite interviews of all times. And Betsy, as you know, is you. a great person and shares so much love and light. And um, that interview is not, not to be missed. So hopefully you'll put that link in there for everybody to hear our conversation because it was very memorable. And we're going to do it again. <laughs> Cause I'm uh, thank you. Yeah. I was just going to say I'm, I'm going to be interviewing you for my new book called Death, What is a Good For?, and it is, um, it's really, it's a very inspirational book. And Betsy will be one of the people that I interview for the book. So you want to stay tuned oh. for that too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great idea. I'm glad you gave me that idea to put the link in the, the interview that I did with you. That's, yeah. I'm going to, I wrote a note, put, <laughs> I actually wrote a note, put link to interview down. <laughs> That's a Absolutely. great idea. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and I also wanted to let everybody know the name of the book is called 
Living Like the Future Matters, The Evolution of a Soil to Soul Entrepreneur. And what we were going to be talking today about was living, eating, and working like the future matters, right? So um, yeah. I, I, I just wanted to clear, clarify that so if people are looking for it, we can also put the cor- correct link to that because that yeah. is like kind of what brought you and I together, you know, because you've been through so much with your life and the way you uh, uh, live your live your life and, and vicariously bring your husband through your life is is like the future matters, right, for both of you. And it's, it's just a, so beautiful that you have this platform for people to come to and experience through you what it's like to go through something like that and um, evolve, right? right? Living yes. The future matters. Mm-hmm. Yes. Th- thank you for clarifying that because, to be honest, sometimes I cannot even read my own handwriting. And you are the founder of Soil to Soul Solutions. I oh, forgot yes, to say that. I'm, I'm the founder, which, which encompasses all these things that I do. It's under one umbrella. Yeah. Busy and, woman. You, <laughs> you're a very busy woman. Yeah. Well, you know, I think being busy is a really, um, I don't, it's, it's not even busy so much as passionate about living and yes. doing yeah. things that, it's not like, you know, you hear that expression, busy work, right? So I'm not busy like that, like doing busy stuff. I'm, I'm really committed to, um, you know, living a legacy lifestyle where I'm contributing and giving more than I take. And that, that yes. I guess yeah. you could say, keeps you busy. <laughs> yes, yes. That's a good type busy. Like, you know, people, and, you know, that's a good point, Donna, because a lot of people and I don't know why Phil let to say this. A lot of people keep themselves, I'm going to use my uh, quotations as busy, so they don't face their feelings. And yeah. we have to face our feelings. And it's okay to validate our feelings. And a lot of people who have lost their loved ones, they, yes, it's great to keep busy doing things, but not if you're avoiding your grieving, not if you're avoiding your pain and how you feel. Um, that you need to work through and yeah. because it will catch up to you. And um, so I, I understand what you mean by um, you're doing a, a good busy. You're very passionate. I have to say this, folks. Have you ever watched Donna? She's so passionate about her work and what she does. You just feel it. Like as soon as I met you and I met you like, you know, um, over Zoom, I think the first time we had a meeting, I just knew your energy. Like I could just feel it. And you're the same way. You feel people's energy. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> what, what, what better thing to do, right? Sometimes it's challenging being an empath, but most of the time it yes. does me well. <laughs> and I'm sure <laughs> there's lots of people out there who feel and I just wanted to touch upon what you were, were talking about, the, the busy, staying busy to avoid the grief and to the, the sadness. Um, and, you know, really, it, 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 I've lost very, very close people to me, right? And I, we all have, and including my animals and also business ideas that I wanted to create, and they died. And... The way, you know, for me, and that's why I'm writing this, this new book, Death, What Is It Good For?, is because there's so much good that comes out of everything when we have the right mindset, and including death, right? Sometimes we have to let sour relationships that are killing our life force go, and it can be painful like a grief, like somebody dying even though they're still alive. Yes. And we also sometimes find out that we're allergic to wheat and we are bakers and we can't eat gluten anymore because it makes us sick. And so you feel that that's a loss, right? You're a baker. So you make the best of it and then you learn how to bake things without gluten. And it's the same thing with this grief. It's, it is a loss. And, like, and I say this because I'm a baker. 
Um, I, I ran a very successful bakery and restaurant for 37 years in Alaska. But, you know, and, and sometimes I fall back and I have gluten and it makes me not feel good. So it's like that's kind of like being busy, you know. It, it, it doesn't feel good just to be busy to cover something up. Like I'll go right. for a sweet roll, you know, or something that I used <laughs> to have. Being busy because, because I'm, I'm, I'm shoving my feelings or my, my emotions. And I know what to do, right? I can have a handful of grapes or even a gluten-free muffin, whatever. <laughs> but it, it's sort of like we want to replace that emotion with something that's going to make us feel better. You can't replace that maybe that person or that business or that sticky bun with another one, right, because it's not going to make you feel good. But we, we can wrap our minds around, our, our mindsets around how do we continue to live like the future matters. And if we're living in constant fear of death or we're living in constant fear of grief and sadness, we become the living dead. And there's not enough oxygen in the world for the world to support all these people if they're feeling like they're walking dead, right? The living dead. Yeah. And there's so many ways that we can revitalize ourselves. And I think that's what attracts me to keep coming back to you and wanting to have conversations with you. The way, the way you have transcended the meaning of, of death by keeping it alive, not just through memories, not just through emotion and spirit, but also sharing it with, with people in different ways that they can help themselves process that grief. You, you're not going to get Matt back in the physical to hug, but you're, you, you're, you're loving and hugging him every day in different ways. There's different ways, and sometimes... It can even be better because you don't have to deal with the arguments. You don't have to deal with the whatever, <laughs> picking up the dirty clothes, washing all the dishes. But, um, you know, and that, that's just throwing a little human there, but we have the opportunity to keep the best parts of those relationships. Okay. Yes, that's, yes that, that's so true, Donna. I, I just feel like, you know, I was determined not to let old timers defeat me. And I was determined, even in grieving, I can't let it defeat me because that Alzheimer's wins and I won't let it win. And I promised Matt when he was dying, I think for his journey, that I would continue on with my work. And I know that's what he would want me to do. And, you know, I just, I just feel like Matt is, is with me. Um, someone said to me one time, Betsy, you don't talk uh, about Matt like in the in the late like oh he's, he's your late husband or in the past tense. You're talking about like he's still alive. Well, to me, he's still with me. I feel like his presence is with me. Now I might sound woo woo to some people, but <laughs> I just feel him with me every day. Absolutely. And I, I, yeah. I, 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 that that's like that's like totally like to me that resonates that's music to my ears. Anytime I feel like I any of these people, including my mother and my father, and even past pets, I just call in their energy, and it fills me, and it satisfies my palate for their presence. Anytime I want them, and and we we all have the capacity to do that. It's what we believe. And in Western society, you know, you go, you know, we were taught that death is fearful. They'll, they'll, they'll do anything they can to keep you alive because there's money to be had rather than dying with dignity. And knowing when you know that they're after, when you know and you believe like you do and like I do, that these people, their bodies may have withered in their minds, but their soul and their spirit are there, and nature teaches us that. I mean, you, you, you can feel the entities everywhere in the whispering of the winds and setting of the sun and just understand that 
the cycles of nature, they're, they're all connected, and we are part of nature. And all of these things, like when, when anything that passes in nature goes into the soil, it turns into microorganisms, and the microorganisms eventually break down the soil, greet new organisms, create new life, and a new plant is grown. And from that is a spirit enters into it. And you can feel the spirit when you're, if you're a sensitive person. And so I, I truly believe what, what, what you and I are saying is if more people, you know, I'm not challenging or asking people to change how they believe if they're going to heaven or hell or reincarnation. Everybody has the right to believe what they want. But if they don't want to turn into the living dead, having a belief system that's not dictated by a synagogue or a church or somebody telling you this is the way it's going to be. If you don't do this, are you naughty or nice? You either get the gift or not, right? The gift of heaven or hell, whatever. It's so important for all of us to take our autonomy back and to sit with ourselves and to be able to have that empathic ability to do the things that we're talking about, to bring those people that we love into our everyday life, some of us. Um, to me, I don't need my dad and my mom every day. I don't need certain people. But there isn't a day that doesn't go by that I don't have some spirit connection with someone who's no longer with us in the physical. And that gives me great satisfaction, and I have no fear of dying. And I think that's what keeps me living like the future matters. It keeps me trying new things, doing different things. When one idea doesn't work, it dies, I create something new. And I'm not trying to simplify losing your loved one or your parent or your dog. My dogs are like, oh, my God. And they only get to live for 12, 15 years. But the, the, the grief is, is so great when, when it happens. But the faster you take care of a wound, the sooner it heals. Same thing with grief. Feel it. Experience it. Go through it. Some people it's going to take longer than others, but it doesn't have to take a lifetime. We can turn that grief into a beautiful idea. We can turn it into like what you've been doing is helping other people. Yes. I, I love your um, saying living like the future matters because it does. And if anything, Donna, um, you know, Matt was 66 when he died. My brother was 67. I had such a new appreciation for life. Cherishing every day is a gift and just, um, you know, really living in the, in the now and in, in the moment. And, you know, I, when I got on Medicare, <laughs> got on Medicare in December, I'm like, oh, I can't believe it. But, and the medications, you know, are expensive. And then I just want to say to people, you know, I like your the topic living eating and working like the future matters take care of yourself in your youth so that when you are older you are not on these expensive medications eating healthy is so important living a healthy lifestyle is so important um and that's what your title kind of reminds me of is yeah the future does matter and we have to live like it matters by doing the living right and eating right and even working um, uh, correctly, you know, right. Like if you are in a toxic environment, work environment, and if you can get out of it, get out of it. If you can, I know that's not always possible, but oh, it's always possible. I've, it's always possible. <coughs> you just, you just I, quit. Yeah. Um, you, 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 I've, you quit and you find, you find something better. You, you you know, because that's like a dying a slow death. When you're, when you're not living, eating, and working like the future matters, it's it, it, it's a, it's it's like drip death. You know, 
no, that they're, they're, you can stop the craziness. And this is where I feel like I come in as a, as a coach and when I work with people who are stuck in these dead-end jobs, in these unfulfilling uh, relationships, in, in areas of their lives that are constipating them for um, living in fear and, and agonizing over things that they have control of but don't take control of it. It's very, very important for anybody who's even listening to this, who is in a dead end, a dead position, or feeling like the living dead, to either seek help or or pull up your bootstraps and follow the light, follow the love, follow the compassion for yourself, your self-worth, your dignity. We only get one life in this body with this mind and this spirit and we have to choose and it's your choice to change and yes. guess what there's nothing constant in nature except change and yes. if people don't understand that or don't know that then maybe now this is your time you're listening to this this is your wake-up call and um you know people have done crazy things that might seem crazy to somebody else but they're not crazy to you. So it's really, it's worth it to, um, you know, take calculated risks with our lives. What do we have to lose? What's the worst thing can happen? We're going to die. But if you don't have fear of death and you understand that there's a thereafter, you, 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 you're, you're okay. Certain, like ha- having a, a dead-end job, let it die. Get rid of it. It's just an anchor. Having a dead-end relationship, it's robbing your soul. Yes, that's true. I just really, really um, believe enough people out there, especially since this whole COVID thing, and you could say, oh, it sounds easy to you, you know, but you didn't just lose this person or that person. Those are excuses. Those are things that are keeping you from being the best version of yourself because the world is screaming for healing right now and for people to be part of the change, like Gandhi says, that we need to see to make this world a better place. And we look at what's going on in Turkey and Syria right now. We look at what's going on in the Congo and South Africa. We look at going on all over. You just have to turn on the news. These people aren't listening to this podcast. So we we are we are strong body able people, or even or emotionally enough to tune into this channel. That you know we have the ability and the responsibility to be alive and not let these things destroy us, so that we can be part of the change. And it's very exciting when we allow ourselves to change. And the thing that I think is so interesting in this whole conversation of change is we get around other people who peg us and they only see us one way and they aren't allowing us to change. And those are like dead-end relationships. So sometimes it means you don't have to completely walk away. But find, like they, the, the old adage, you know, you find, you want to be richer, hang around people who are richer than you. You want to be smarter, hang around smarter people. You want to be happier, hang around happier people. So we, we have the opportunity to listen to all the wisdom from all these great spiritual business gurus, all kinds of people who help people transition, start reading those books. It's not, yes. it's not necessary to be trapped. That's very, that's very true. And it doesn't matter what your age is either. Right, Donna? I was 60 years old when I started to flip my beliefs and do my inner work. So that's five years ago. And it's never too late 
to change. Donna, do you so do you counsel people? People can, can get in touch with you for counseling, coaching. Yes. Yep. I. 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 Here's the thing. I used to do a a lot of it. You know, why retire when I can inspire, right? And now I choose to work with people who put social and environmental justice at the forefront of their endeavors. I like to work with people who see the bigger picture in their work, in their life. I help people with life plans so that their businesses don't devour them and that um, I help people build other leaders by being great leaders. Um, It's really, really the kind of work that I do is help people process the stuff that's holding them back from being their authentic self. But some people, you know, I have coached people, like I'm not a six-figure, seven-figure, eight-figure income, like you got to make this much money. To me, it's redefining success and wealth. To me, it's looking at our lives and our lifestyles and how we, um, you know, we, we're living like the future matters. We're eating like the future matters. And we're working like the future matters. And we do it in that order. First we look at, you know, how, how are we living? What's my lifestyle like? And how is the food that I'm eating affecting not just my body, but the world? How is my work contributing to my health or not. And when you look at it in that order, then you have true wealth. Because if you're healthy, you can help others get healthy just by living an example. If you are healthy, you can create financial freedom and be a great leader and help others be great leaders. And you can work together and co-create and collaborate rather than competition and greed. You know, we have have this thing going on, you know, in our society where, you know, this capitalism, I call it corruptism, because capitalism onto its own isn't a bad thing. But capitalism has become so corrupt. I love seeing people create a lifestyle around a career that fortifies their health. Because when you put social and environmental justice at the forefront of your endeavors and you've got a business, you're not impacting just one person. You can impact millions. Because businesses change the world faster than anything since the Ice Age. And it's ethical businesses and business leaders with the moral courage They have the ability and the responsibility to change things the fastest. So when I coach and I work with people, it's not about me starting the next great business or enterprise. It's helping these leaders at any age. I just was coaching a woman who's 65. She was born the same year I was, and she lives in Montana, and she is um, uh, raises all her own botanicals and creates face face formulas and all salves and all kinds. Her product line is amazing. But she also wants to start uh, teaching people and doing retreats like I do here on, at, in Hawaii and have where people can come and learn what she's doing. Anyway, she, she might be going on Shark Tank. Anyway, I'm helping her because her heart is in the right place. I mean, she is doing this. She's going to leave the land to the land trust. Um, she's working, we're going to be working with the indigenous people in her area to give cultural reference to the property and um, respect to the dignity of uh, the area that she's living in. And it's such a joy to want to see someone at 65 years of age you know, who has a company, who wants to continue to expand her company and in, in ways where she can impact more people and leave this land in a beautiful state for future, all people of future generations to enjoy. So I want to help people like that, 
right? Those are the people that give me the most joy um, and satisfaction um, to see them be successful with their life plan and their business plan. I hope that makes sense. (laughs) Oh, it does. It does make sense. That's beautiful, Donna. That is um, so inspiring. You just inspire me. I, and, and I, I agree with you. I, I would love to see, you know, people, men and women, come together and support each other in businesses, in whatever they do. And not it be, like, I know there's competition, okay? I know business-wise and people have their ratings, whatever. But I would like to see people just, you know, support each other. Um, for instance, you know, like I, I have people on who have other uh, podcasts. Well, why not? I want to promote people. I want people to know about people that I think are fantastic and that can help them have a better life. Um, it, and it's, you know, it's, and it's not, um, and I'm in a lot of Facebook groups and a lot of people might look at it as, a competition and they don't allow certain people to, you know, put in their shows or links. I'm like, you know what? And my group hashtag kick Alzheimer's ass movement. Hey, if you're a good resource, I want you, I want you to put your resource in my group because I don't have all the answers. Uh, I would really like to see more, I, I, I guess, cohesiveness, um, a sense of really supporting each other and helping each other to be um, to reach out more people because yeah. you know, like why are we doing what we're doing but to help other people? Yeah, you know, it's, it, I, I love everything you just said there, and this is so true because you know we have been set up to separate, conquer, and divide, right? And and that is just not the way that God, universe, whatever intended it to be and if you look at nature there's certain types of competition that happen out there for survival but that only happens when there's um a a drought or a severe storm and there there needs to be competition somewhat to stay alive but the total cool thing is if you like i spend a lot of time studying nature and ecology you know when when you when a habitat is not destroyed or you know, has horrible things happening. It's a beautiful, thriving ecosystem. It's full of diversity, biodiversity, all these organisms working and functioning together. You've got vines growing up trees. You've got um, layers and layers of soil with all kinds of organisms all working together to bring the fruit to the harvest so that the the birds and, and, and the wildlife can eat, and it's like harmony. And I always guide people to nature for all the answers, basically. Um, and when you see that, and then you, if, you, if, you, if you, most of what's happening with climate change and all the horrific things that we're seeing in the world, it's counterintuitive to what you and I are talking about is co-creating, collaborating. It's, it's conquer and divide, and he who has the water rights owns the world. He who has the, you know, really, because without water, we have nothing. We can't grow food. We can't drink. We can't bathe. And look what's happening with the waters. If they're not polluted, they're droughts. If it's not a drought, there's a flood. So really, who does control the water? It's Mother Earth. Mother Earth is the one who is calling all the shots. But these big shots think they're going to control nature. And these big shots are mostly men in white suits. I mean, white men in black suits. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of an old <laughs> adage. Like, I write about this in my book, right, I'm Living Like the Future Matters, and also my other book, Conscious Cure, Soul, Lucian to 21st Century Pandemics. You know, we, we, they, we only, you only need one rooster in a hen house, right, to get the fertile eggs. So let's, you know, a lot of this, too, is like women uniting, coming together, not competing. And this whole thing, like you're saying on social media, you can't post your events or do this stuff. I mean, we're, we're just, it's just like... Uh, don't be in those groups. That's all I have to say. Don't support those yeah. groups. And, you know, like same thing on my um, Facebook group. I, I, I welcome it all. I want to know every time there's an event. 
and we promote the heck out of like, well, you saw what we did for, for your event. And, you know, we, we continue to pr- promote um, exceptional conversations. But it's more than promoting. Like you said it too earlier, Betsy. It's about you want to share this, these great people and all this wisdom with as many people as you can. And so words are very, very powerful. And I learned a long time ago when I started my restaurant at 25 years of age that I wasn't going to be doing uh, sales and marketing in my business. I was going to educate. They're, they're really do the same thing. When you, but with education, you're getting out more uh, concrete information. Um, you're doing it in a way like when, when, the, when the organic chocolate chip cookies used to come out of the oven, my goal was I'm going to sell every one of these while they're hot. But I'm not going to do it by doing sales and marketing. I'm going to walk out in the dining room with a hot plate or cookies and educate people and let them know these cookies just came out of the oven, hot out of the oven, made with all organic ingredients. Would anybody like one? Right? I'd sell them all. I would do that with everything in the restaurant. We didn't advertise them very rarely in the newspaper or the radio. I'm talking about 37 years. I probably did $2,000 worth of ads. So it wasn't, it, it, and that would, those were usually to promote an event at my restaurant. So it's about educating people, and it's about informing people and giving people good information that they can learn and grow and feel like they're part of something greater than themselves. Not that the cookies may be greater than themselves. But the, the, the point I'm making is we, we really owe it. Why well, retire when we can inspire, Betsy? We really owe it to people in some level, especially the younger people, to, to rise up, wise up, and become part of the, like I say, Solution, S-O-U-L, the solution. There's so many problems out there that, yes. and, but there's just as many, if not more, solutions. And the only way we're going to get to the bottom of this is if we network like nature, if we come back to the layers of the soil where the microorganisms feed the soil that make, breaks it down into humus and beautiful, loamy environment where plants can grow. And the water comes and it, and it, it, and it it's, fertilizes the seeds from the nourishment from the, all the surrounding areas, the natural fertilizers that come with the rain. And then we get this abundance. We get food forests. We get a harvest. There is so much abundance out there when we think of this from the soil to the soul. When, when, we, when we are, like, how can we all benefit from this? How exactly. How yes. benefit from this? And this uh, is counterintuitive yeah. to what we're taught in school and not sports games and all the um, academic competition, even with the reviews on TripAdvisor and Airbnb or, so what if I have all five stars reviews? You know why we do? It's because I educate people when they come here. And on, my, on my, all the sales copy, you could say, or whatever, I don't sit there and try and sell people. I let them know the truth. This is what you're going to have when you come to the Oasian Season Farmstead Retreat. If you're looking for the Ritz Carlton, you're not going to find it here. This is the place where you come to, to commune with nature and eat local organic food. It, and and that's, that's, I'm educating you, right? I'm not selling anybody who's listening to this. But if people want to come to Hawaii and that's the experience they want, then that's what I want to offer. That is what I choose to offer. And I think it's the same thing like coming back. It's, it's, it's like what we talked about at the very beginning, like it's this belief system or this passion for how we want to live, work, and eat like the future matters. How we want to, what, what is it, what, what approach do we want to take to, to, to grieving, to the death process, to, to anything? If we are educated and we're not going to 
a sermon or we're not going to uh, a, a death attorney or, or when you're doing your will and they're telling you everything, this is what you got to do or this is how you have to believe. But when we take the time and we get to know ourselves, we're the one in charge of that pen and signing that paper, or we're the one in charge of how we see our loved one in heaven or hell or by our side 24-7 or whenever we want to call them in. These are, these are choices that we get to make. We're still in a freak enough country that we have the opportunity to think for ourselves. And when I, when I share this, it all comes back to really sales and marketing is you're selling something or you're telling people to believe this is true and then you get it in the mail and it's not what they said it was going to be. So it's, we, we want to educate ourselves in, the whole, uh, in everything that we're doing. I mean, being a lifetime learner, no matter what age you're at, if we're interested yes. in something, passionate about something, we want to educate ourselves, learn everything we want, but don't just take, you know, Andy Wild, Dr. Andy Wilds or Dr. Mark Heyman, these are, you know, regenerative health practitioners, you know, who are um, doing uh, functional medicine. I mean, they're fabulous. But they all, even though they're both functional medicine practitioners, they, they have slightly different views. And then you talk to somebody else or your local practitioner or just, just like, like what you had to struggle with because I know your story with Matt with Alzheimer's and going in and hearing what all these different doctors have to say. And the smartest doctor in the room is you because you know your body. You know how you're right. feeling. Educate yourself. Yes. Right? And it's what you believe. Yes. If, you believe if you're going to believe you're going to get well, you're going to get well, either in the thereafter or on the, in the living on earth part of it. Because you, you have a belief system that doesn't matter whether you're in the physical body or not, that you're going to be well no matter where you end up. And that's a choice we get to make. And that's why I don't fear death. And that's why I challenge myself to do all kinds of things. And I'm not jumping out of airplanes because it's too much of a carbon footprint, although I'd like the experience, maybe, maybe in a parachute, uh, but not in an airplane. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, I mean, there's, there's lots of thing, crazy things that, that I, I would like to experience. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I hope this all is, 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 is coming to the point of really it comes down to it's our choice what we believe in and how we live and work like the future matters. If we believe that, we are going to eat healthier. If we, we, we will have a lifestyle that fosters not only our own good health, but those around us and the planet. And if we're doing work that is contributing to helping make the, your community, your, your county, your state, the United States, the world, a better place, one bite at a time, one choice at a time, we make a difference. Yes. And if you're given uh, too absolutely. many choices, right? If you're given too many choices mm. sometimes, like too many cereals in the cereal aisle, you know, Captain Crunch or Sugar Frosted Flakes, they're great. Or you know to stay out of the cereal aisle or not shop in those kind of stores and make your own homemade granola if you're going to have cereal. And then you can make choices with your own homemade organic granola that you bought all the ingredients in bulk. Sometimes you can put pecans in. Sometimes you can put dates or, you know, whatever it is. But you made a better choice than supporting these corporate entities that are making us sick, that are same companies that own our seeds, our agricultural lands, are the same people who make these products who are either own a pharmaceutical company or partnered with one. So it's a sick cycle, and that's not living like the future matters by buying into that. So I encourage everybody who's listening to start making these personal choices for themselves 
that are going to be good for themselves and future generations. Uh, thank you, Donna. Um, thank you for coming on my show and sharing your knowledge and everything that you do um, to help other people, to help ed- educate other people and help them live a, a better life and having a better future. Can you tell our uh, tell the audience where they can reach you? And it will be in the blog. Uh, how can they reach you for counseling, uh, coaching? Yeah, well, that, there's several ways they can reach me. Um, you can even call me on my cell number or text me at 808 315 one three four two, and I don't give my number out often. Text me first, and then I would send you a calendar link and do a complimentary consultation. You can also reach me and set up a consultation on my website at uh, donamaltz.com, and you, I know you're going to have that in there. And then I also am a professional nature photographer, and I have my my books and on um, both websites, but Eco-Spired by Nature, um, all the proceeds from my books and my um, nature prints go to humanitarian and environmental causes. And um, the majority of what I do when I coach, depending on who I'm coaching, um, I donate funds to certain organizations based on their preferences. I think it's really important paying it forward, giving it, giving, you know, like right. how much do we all really need? So I'm giving you those ways to get a hold of me and reasons that you might want to um, further our conversation. And I hope, um, I hope everybody listening uh, just were doing this show on Valentine's Day. And with all my heart, I want to send many loves, a love light and, and blessings and to you, um, Betsy, for inviting me on your show and believing in each other and being part of educating people about things that matter. And I'm really, really grateful for this time. Oh, you are welcome. My pleasure. I forgot to mention, I can't read my handwriting, that uh, Don is a wonderful photographer. She takes beautiful pictures. I've seen um, her work. And the pictures are, are stunning. And your books, they are available on your website and also on Amazon, Donna? Yeah, Amazon, Barnes & Nobles, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you can even get them in your local bookstore if you want to support your local bookstore. And, and actually, I want to just say one thing about what I was talking about, the, the corporations, that the, the greed and the non-collaboration or non-co-creating uh, co- uh, major corporations which there's really 10 of them that really feed, feed are, are, are responsible for this, and you can Google that. But this is really just to inspire people. I mean, just think about creating your own granola company or having, bringing back small cottage industries and building community because um, unity in community builds our immunity, and we need immunity right now in every sense of the word. So I just wanted to you know, finish that little um, conversation there and empire, empire, inspire you and to do that. And that's partly why I got into m- photography um, at 65. Now I'm uh, earning some money so I can keep contributing and being more or less a philanthropist with my artwork is we have a local co-op um, that's an artist community co-op. And if you don't already have an artist co-op and you're an artist, I mean, that's why I got into this because the art co-op was just, it was just a bunch of really great people who wanted to co-create and collaborate and sh- sell our art under the same roof. Well, you can do that with all kinds of things. And it, it's, it's just been such a joy to participate and be part of something. I don't have to run my own payroll. It's not my, you know, it's like we all do our part. And... Um, and, and I get to share um, my photography and my books at the, at, at the co-op and um, continue to co-create. I have artists now that are making frames for my pictures. And so we're joint selling 
photography in their frames. A co framed uh, one of my picture with a, one of my pictures, and so it, it, it's there's so many ways that we can co-create, and so you'll see that on Eco Inspired by Nature. So um, anyway. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, thank you, Donna, uh, so much. You heard Donna Maltz today, and uh, what an inspiring uh, person, uh, full of compassion, energy, and light and love, and I just really enjoy talking to you, Donna. I'll have to have you come on again because we could talk for hours. Um, just uh Wonderful conversation. We have a lot in common, we're both Jersey girls, and we um, we do we we share a, a lot of um, similar uh, beliefs and and have uh, much in common. And I'm grateful that um, I met you. And I just uh, yes, it is Valentine's. This probably won't post for another month, but I hope everyone finds the love. And I want to thank. Um, the listeners for listening, uh, please subscribe to Chatting with Betsy so I can help other people. The more people who hear the show, more people can get helped. I have phenomenal guests you don't want to miss. I am on Spotify, Spreaker, uh, YouTube, iHeart, and I want to thank Katie White, who's station manager, Pashwell Talk Radio, who writes the blog, and information about Donna Maltz will be in the blog. So please read it, and Jeannie produces the show. And I want to thank Lillian Caldwell, CEO of Passionate World Talk Radio, who makes this all possible. And as I always end my show with, in a world where you could be anything, please be kind and shine your light bright. And if we all did that, it would be a much brighter and kinder world. And this is Betsy Wurzel, your host of Chatting with Betsy, the Passionate World Talk Radio. So we chat again. I hope you all just keep shining and be kind to each other and um, blessings to you all. Chat with you next time. Bye-bye.